Hey everyone, welcome back. So shortly after I finalized my edits on the previous video, Bamboo did release an updated blog post. I am pleased that they are responding quickly. So with their latest blog post, Bamboo Labs started off venting, which I think isn't unreasonable. There were a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt like claims going around online this weekend. And I think some people just read the headlines and decided they were either at the end of the world or it was a complete overreaction and there was nothing to worry about. And that just caused a lot of infighting and bickering on Reddit, the Bamboo forums, the Facebook groups, etc. So Bamboo lamented that the community was being a bit absurd with some of their claims. And for the most part, I'd say that's accurate on the far end of things. But Bamboo would probably be in a little bit less heat with the, with the public about this particular item if they explained how it works. And I get this wasn't really intended to be, to be brought to light so quickly, but I don't really think they understood when they rolled out this blog post this last week how much backlash there would be, especially because of the, the implications for third-party plugins. However, Bamboo did reveal a change of direction. Uh, similar with past uh, occurrences, Bamboo did relent a bit amongst the blowback. It definitely felt more like an arm twist and not an olive branch, though. So, was this a change of heart? Bamboo at least recognized the desire for the MQTT access to be open for power users. In response, they are creating a dev mode option that allows the status quo to remain, but only in land mode. This seems like a somewhat fair alternative to allowing existing options to continue to work. This is a relief for me to an extent, as I just got my hands on a Panda Touch, and I was disappointed to find out it was already gonna be losing its functionality so quickly. So where are we at now? With a bit more clarification from Bamboo, it is a little clearer what they're attempting to do and their direction for the future. They carved out some time to explain their position on third-party software and hardware, and that it, they claim that it wasn't their intention to limit it. Special emphasis was placed on the fact that they are reaching out to third parties that they see are important. It does appear that they are welcoming other devs to reach out to them and partner with them as well. So what is clear is they're not backing down on the Bamboo Connect as a whole, choosing to continue to push this middleware as a security feature. I think if they had brought this out as a cloud-only issue, people would have reacted much, much differently. The place they didn't necessarily clarify for people was around how the certificate expiry works in the Bamboo Connect application for LAN-only mode. So for those users, there were concerns whether when a ticket reaches expiry, does another one get generated automatically? Do you have to be connected to the internet for this to happen? Does the printer need to be connected to the network? Well, how does that work for LAN only mode? Because everyone was talking about the ticking time bomb of this annual uh, certificate expiring, and does that mean your printer won't be able to print? And I don't really think that it's gonna lock you out of your printer and make it, you know, where it's a brick. And this is not addressing the concerns that they've already cracked and found the X509 certificate and private key. This happened within like 48 hours of the beta going live. And that does heighten some concerns that even if they do refactor the program a bit, how secure is it really going to be? So where are my thoughts with all this? I have spent a lot of time reflecting and discussing with various people over the last few days as, these, as to the effect of these changes. This latest blog post did offer a, me a, the bare minimum items that I was looking for and asking for, a way of maintaining access to the MQTT communication, specifically because of my Panda Touch and trying to get involved more with Home Assistant automations on my printers. However, I am beginning to think that Bamboo Connect is an attempt at something more like OctoPrint to be Bamboo specific and to be their future jumping off point or hub and running as like a service on a machine in your network. That's what I think that the end goal might have actually been because putting it as a, a, I guess that doesn't make sense either because they say it's gonna be integrated in with Bamboo Studio, but it just feels weird to break off essentially just the device page and spin it off and let you connect to multiple printers and multiple devices all from this application just to talk to other slicers. So with the wording from Bamboo, it seems like this is their method of putting a valve on the flow of information from farm software and print management software and tools to their machines. And from a liability standpoint, I understand. 
Bamboo is simply taking responsibility for the security of their machines on your network and on their cloud. I don't think it's unreasonable as a default setting to, for them to want to make sure everything is as secure as possible, especially when a lot of people just expect them to take care of this for them and not even think about it. So the fact that they're trying to add an authentication or an authorized, a level of authorization when you send commands to your printer, making sure that a first party application talks to their first party printer, that doesn't have anything to do with the fact of in, or third party access necessarily. They chose to not make Bamboo Connect have all the capabilities of the current MQTT uh, API. They could have built it all into Bamboo Connect, made it to where you opt in and say, I take responsibility that something remote is running my, my heater, my motors, etc., and let you pull Bamboo Connect. Had they done that, had they made it to where, okay, you need to have this Bamboo Connect service running on your machine, when a computer in the house, since you already have Home Assistant running on a computer, people could have just went from Home Assistant to a service on their computer called Bamboo Connect and made those calls instead of Printer Direct. Had they done that from the get-go, they wouldn't be in the situation they're in. And that's because they kind of shuffled under the, the, the rug the fact that this same authorization scheme is intended to also come with closing those API access to your printer for anything except what they consider non-essential functionality. So other than pulling the status of the printer, colors on the AMS and other things like that, pretty much everything else is off limits. And they chose to limit it to that. They chose to do so. And that really is showing their hand. And if you go back to their blog post to last year, after the whole uh, X1 Plus debacle, they pretty much mentioned that MQTT access for anything except basic functionality was eventually gonna get cut off. I don't know what my next steps are gonna be. I already decided for now to preserve my Panda Touch functionality. I am going LAN only mode. Both of my printers here as well as my other one are all in LAN only mode. And I'm gonna stay on the current firmware at least until a few upgrades and updates come through. That My decision may change with time, but first I need to be sure that developer mode is here to stay and that this isn't just a boil the frog situation. I really love my bamboo printers, and I've recommended them to friends, to colleagues, etc. over and over again in the past. I will take a more measured approach going forward. I think for many users, this will these will still make fine printers, and I'm not here to just bash on them. But I don't really like the slow frog boiling of more and more layers appearing between myself and a machine that I own. This likely isn't the last post we'll see from Bamboo and the last that we'll hear on this issue. And I plan to do a video soon on some of the projects that have sprung up from Bamboo's previous tolerance of third-party add-ons. I really appreciate everyone's comments on the previous video and I hope I didn't come across too harsh at any point because I do think that this is a, a difficult problem, right? I understand that Bamboo's probably in a imposition here, especially if there truly is a security concern with their cloud being overloaded. There's been comments in the past about them being slammed with valid and invalid traffic, and rate limiting alone probably won't fix all of that. But I do think that the way that they handled this and their typical method of kind of hitting back instead of just listening, especially when they're a little defensive sometimes, doesn't always come across friendly to to criticism and to feedback. And I hope it doesn't run off too many customers in the meantime. Well, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.